Hello friends, it's Tim here for another Wednesday update video, and I want to begin with a reflection on Scripture, Titus chapter 3, and throughout the Bible there are a number of big uh, but statements, but God kinds of statements. Usually what comes before is some reflection on sin, the darkness and despair of human sin, uh, the utter evil and helplessness of man in sin, but then there's this major pivot on a but God statement or a but now statement about God and his provision for sin. So you see it in Genesis 3 after Adam and Eve have sinned in the garden and they've hidden themselves, but then it says, but God uh, came calling, came looking for them so that he could deal with them and ultimately promise redemption and not uh, give up on man in sin. You see it also in places like Romans chapter 3 after Paul has spent two chapters detailing how evil sin is and how uh, completely it has saturated the human race, but then he says, but now the righteousness of God has been revealed. Uh, and it goes on to describe the, the work of Christ on the cross as our uh, means of atonement of sin and uh, being counted righteous before God. So there are a number of these statements in the Bible. Also, Ephesians 2 has another one to, uh, in verse 4. But I want to point you to the one in Titus 3, verse 4. I'm going to actually start reading in verse 3, where Paul uh, tells Titus, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others. And the idea there is hateable, like worthy of being hated, hated by others and hating one another. But verse 4, But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us. So this is one of those Glorious but statements that, that pivots uh, the whole discourse from our own sin and our own wickedness to God's goodness in saving and ultimately saving and giving Jesus Christ as our Savior, our, our ransom from sin uh, to redeem us. And it's important, uh, looking at verse 3 in this description, and a really uh, descriptive account of how bad we were in sin before we were in Christ. And really this is a description too of how bad sin is even the indwelling sin that we have in Christ, it is of the same nature, uh, and it is it is this evil and dark. And when we talk about sin, and when we go on and even uh, want to dig deep into understanding sin and being thorough about it, the point of it isn't to ultimately just beat up on ourselves. Uh, even you know, in the context of our equipping hour, we're going through this book on the acceptable sacrifice uh, by John Bunyan, and it's it's helpful, though it's hard to be hearing about how just how we ought to be laid low in our sin, how we ought to be made miserable over our sin. and and But the point of all that isn't to just feel bad about ourselves. The point is to magnify the but. The point is to magnify what it is in God in giving His Son and in, in conceiving and executing this plan of redemption that is so praiseworthy. And you see that in verse 4, the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior and that word loving kindness has, has to do with love of man, man love. Uh, not man as a gender, but man as a race. It's just free uh, love and compassion in God and goodness, bounty, generosity that has driven him to save us in Christ. And so that's the incentive for being real about our sin. That's the incentive in our evangelism for being honest with others about how bad their sin is. That it puts the whole gospel, the work of Christ in such beautiful and clear relief uh, over against the backdrop of sin. And we, we magnify and praise God for being so generous and kind. And also, the, the more particular application that Paul's making, if you uh, were to look back at, at uh, verses 1 and 2, he's telling Titus, Tell the people in Crete to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, etc. So the, the subtext of all this, it seems like what Paul's saying is, look, your interactions with the world, the world is like this. And so there's going to be a lot of temptation, a lot of occasion maybe to be quarrelsome and to be nasty toward the world because uh, there are a lot of people, maybe even in our own lives, who are foolish and disobedient and are being led astray by various passions. And so Paul's saying, lest we be drawn into controversy with them and, and dispute, 
be mindful that that's where you were before the grace of God claimed you in Christ. And so uh, we want to be gentle and kind, even as we're, we're bold in calling people to know Christ. So that's, I hope, an encouraging word for you and just a reminder of why it really matters to be serious about the darkness of sin so that we can be uh, just more enthralled by the brightness of God's goodness in, in what he's done in Christ. Uh, a few uh, things about the church that I want to remind you about, just kind of updates in the life of the body. A reminder again, the reason why you're seeing me on this video is that Greg and Lori are, are on vacation. Uh, so do be praying for them, uh, that the Lord would refresh them through this time. Um, we also, and you got an email earlier this week about this, but we want to let you know too that Paul and Ellie, the Ursula family, have received news from Grace Bible Fair Oaks on Sunday evening that uh, Grace Bible did indeed uh, vote to call Paul for this position that he was being considered for uh, as a full-time pastor overseeing music and corporate worship. So uh, this is certainly Grace Bible's gain, and it's going to be bittersweet for us as a church, knowing that they're uh, they're going to be useful. The Lord's going to use them and bear fruit for them there, just as he has here among us, though it's going to be a loss for us, of course. And uh, we are working and praying and, and making plans, and the Lord is, is bringing pieces together in terms of who's going to be taking responsibilities for areas of ministry that Paul's been leading. And Paul's been a, a huge part of that, too, which is uh, really encouraging. So just be staying tuned for more about that. And we also, on Wednesday, the 29th, the evening, we're going to have a, a farewell event for the Ursals to, to send them off with love. And so be be looking for more information on that as it comes out. A few more notes about this coming Sunday. Uh, we've been announcing, we, we sent an email last week and we mentioned Sunday morning that this coming Sunday, the 19th, we're going to be moving our service outside, exclusively outside, to comply with uh, new government orders regarding covid and we're, we're moving that actually up an hour to start at 9 a.m., which is early, but we want to beat the heat. We don't want to be out there as it's climbing into warmer and warmer weather, so we thought starting at 9 would be a good way to do that. And just to remind you, too, we're still going to be live streaming on Facebook, even from outside. So if being there poses any problem for you attending, either just being outside is not going to work for you or something like that, feel free to stream from home on Facebook. I finally want to remind you about a few prayer requests, just things going on in individuals' lives in the body. There are a number of people, both members and, and uh, people who are kind of connected as non-members, who have lost loved ones recently. We heard just yesterday about Daniel Falk uh, losing his uncle. Uh, also, Eric and Celestine, a little while back, lost Eric's mom. And also, you've probably heard of Danny and Ali Acevedo, who lost Danny's dad recently, too. So these are just brothers and sisters who understandably grieving, and, and so keep them in prayer, be encouraging them, uh, that, and be praying that the Lord would draw near and comfort them, and even use this trial to uh, show himself to them more clearly. Uh, also, other things, John Shaver, just as he's shared in the uh, RCG prayer thread, that uh, he's just having ongoing challenges with, with caring for his adult son who lives within Brandon, so be praying for John as he works through this and tries to glorify God. And uh, also Scott Harrison and Kelsey Fowler, both of whom are recovering uh, from health issues that you've heard about. So keep them in prayer as well. And please stay tuned as, as more of these prayer requests come out on this RCG prayer thread. But for now, uh, thank you and uh, we're praying for you and love you and look forward to seeing you on Sunday, those of you who are able to make it. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.